Okay, it's come time to do another oil change on Project Meep here. So I'm going to show you how to do it. If you've never done one on a Versa, or maybe this is your first car and you've never done one at all, it can be kind of a scary task. Let's go through it step by step, get you through it, and you'll be able to do these from now on and save yourself a few bucks. To start with, I've got the car lifted up on j with my jack. It's on jack stand, so it's not going to fall on me when I crawl underneath. Please be sure to put it on jack stands or something that will hold the car up just for safety. I've got the hood open, got the oil dipstick pulled up, and I've got the cap, oil cap taken off. Now, doing that is going to allow air to go through there. It's going to help the oil drain out once I pull the drain plug out of, out of the uh, pan at the bottom. Once we do that, we'll come back up here and tidy up and check all the fluids, air filter. So let's get started underneath. Alright, so now we're under here. Now, this black pan here is your automatic transmission, which is on Project Meep. This is the bell housing for the transmission where it couples to the engine. And this pan on the driver's side is the bottom of the engine. Now you just need a 14 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And you're just going to give it a slight tug to the left. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, unscrew it. And if you put a little bit of pressure on the bolt pushing it in, just until the last thread is done, it's not going to spray oil until you take the bolt away. Now I usually wear a nice glove while I do this. That keeps my hands nice and clean. It's easy to pull off once it's done. And now it's just time to let the oil drain. I've let this drain for about five minutes. And once the oil stops dripping out of the drain plug, you can just put the plug back in. I recommend hand, hand threading it all the way till it stops. Get you your socket and just snugging it down. It doesn't need to be real tight. Uh, make sure you place the washer if it needs it. And just don't strip this out because it's really a pain in the butt to have to replace. Next we're going to move on to the oil filter. Now I've slid this forward and the oil filter is on the front here. I've got it dripping just a little bit. This just hand screws or unscrews to the left. And once you take it out, just beware that oil is going to drip down the front of the engine. And that's just coming out of the filter. Once you take it off, you can just set it aside and let it drip out. Take your new one. Take it out of the box. And you want to put some oil on the seal here. So I just usually take it, run around in some of the old oil, run around with my finger. That way I know it's well lubricated. This will get a good seal to the engine. And this is just going to go through and replace it. Now you're going to hand tighten it all the way down until the seal touches. Then go about two thirds of a turn more. That way you don't over tighten it and make it leak at the seal here. Once you're done there, you can lower the car down, take everything out before that, and then we'll do everything at the top. Now I know the air dam here seems to, like it wants to block it. I've taken it and actually notched out a section here right below the oil filter. That way it doesn't drip down into this plastic under tray here. And because I have the carbon fiber splitter, this plastic tray makes it even harder to get into. So if you want to, just take some scissors, a knife, or anything. Just notch a little section here, maybe about three inches towards the front and then about six across and then three inches back and take that out and that will give it a little bit more to drain and it's really not going to affect the aerodynamics any. I'll see you on the top side. Okay, I'm back with Project Meat, back on the ground. I did check everything underneath, lowered the car back down. That way it sits flat and the oil is going to go distribute well in the pan. Now I have to take my cap off and set it aside. I've used my funnel. I clean my funnel out. Make sure you clean this out. Wipe it out every time. That way you don't put gunk back right back in the engine with this oil. This is going to take four quarts and three eighths. So you can, you can buy five quarts or you can buy a five gallon jug, whatever you want to do. And then you just need to add four and three eighths quarts. Okay, now once you're done, you can set that aside take the funnel out, set it aside, and put the dipstick back in, put the oil cap back on, make sure it's nice and tight, don't overdo it, just snug it up, give it a little twist, should be good. Now you want to start the car, check it for leaks underneath, let it run for maybe 15-20 seconds, that way it gets the oil all the way through the engine, and then you're going to let it sit 
uh, let's say five minutes. That way it allows the oil to drain back down to the pan so you can get a correct reading on your dipstick. I've already run the car, check for drips, there's nothing underneath. Now during the, let's say five minutes when it's sitting here, letting the oil drain down to the pan, now's a good time to check all your fluids. Remember, don't check this hot, don't check the coolant if it's hot. You can check your air filter just by popping the cap off here. Set that aside, bring it out, look at the condition. If it's really dirty, maybe it's time to give it a cleaning. If that's okay, put that back in. And check your brake fluid. And check your transmission fluid. Now, it's right down here in the front of the transmission. The clip you push to the side, pull the dipstick out. And when you look at it, it should be full. Your transmission fluid should kind of have a pungent smell to it, and it should be a nice pink cherry red. Now, this Project Meat has about 30,000 miles on it, which is the recommended changing interval for the transmission fluid. So this one's starting to get eh, a little dull, even a little bit orange. So I'm going to change this in a couple weeks, but at least it's full on the dipstick. Coolant bottle, if you look at the side, it should be right about to the max line because it's cold. You can always fill up your window, windshield washer fluid. Now on this, the power steering is electric, power assisted. There's a solenoid under the dash. That way there's no power steering fluid to check. So if someone tells you they checked it, question them because they didn't check anything. Now I'm going to give it a little, little bit of time, let it finish, and then I'm going to check to make sure it's full. I'll top it off, and then we're done. All right, once you've checked all your fluids, your oil is full, pull out your dipstick, double check, oil line should stop right by the dot next to the H, that means it's full, it's on the max level, give it a good wipe, put it back in, double check all the hoses and everything are back together, no leaks, and it's a wrap folks, it's just that simple. If you have any questions, come visit us on the forums. Thanks for stopping by. This concludes our broadcast today. We'll see you next time.